so far in earlier sessions we have defined the meaning of entropy mutual information and hence the channel capacity for both discrete and continuous memoryless channel we'll continue the discussion on continuous memoryless channel which is more a practical uh, which has more practical application as in the nature we have got you know continuous channel okay so we have defined the capacity we have defined so far that the capacity the channel capacity in fact the capacity of channel is defined as c which is by definition is the is the maximum rate of maximum rate of information transmission right maximum rate of information transmission okay okay over a channel or any given channel right as I had told in the earlier session we have just talked about a channel in generic we have not uh, we have just also told that for a given channel or for a known channel however we have not uh, modeled the channel or we have not formulated the channel by no means okay but in this session we will try to uh, say that the channel is very specific or the channel is known to us uh, where uh, the channel is you know channel can be mo uh, uh, modeled as you know Gaussian channel okay so which uh, when the signal is transmitted over such a channel it is affected by the noise but the noise is you know Gaussian noise okay so that we have also defined the mutual information I of X Y which is given as H of X minus h of x given y or also with the symmetric property of mutual information this can as well be written as h of y minus h of y given x the conditional entropy okay i repeat these are the relational or differential entropies uh, for the case of a continuous memoryless channel okay so our aim here is to find okay our aim of uh, or the discussion uh, the whole uh, uh, the crux of the discussion uh, for this session is that we need to find the maximum value of x i uh, max maximum value of uh, uh, mutual information to find the channel capacity to find the channel capacity which is defined as maximum value of the mutual information correct okay so of course this is per second so whatever we have defined is you know the channel capacity is per second okay but let's try to find out the maximum value of i of x y per symbol okay so let's try to find out okay per symbol if there are k symbols per second then we can try to you know multiply uh, with such amount of uh, uh, symbols uh, which exist in a second okay so we shall find here the capacity of a channel for for a known uh, you know a channel in the sense the given that it is given that certain specifications okay the channel okay so these are the given information the channel is band limited okay. the channel is band limited to say b hertz the bandwidth of the channel is b okay designated as you know capital b okay and the channel has a noise in it and the noise is additive white 
Gaussian. Okay, so that its power spectral density is defined as n over n naught over 2. So we have defined earlier that if this is the spectral density of noise, it can be plotted for white Gaussian noise that its spectral density is flat. So flat in the sense it is constant over all the frequencies with a power spectral density of n naught over 2. So this factor n naught okay uh, the factor half here indicates that the power spectral density is distributed on either side of the frequency band whether it's you know uh, from negative to the positive frequencies so the half indicates that it is spread over the uh, you know uh, two uh, sides of the uh, frequency axis right so we shall also consider we shall also say that we shall also uh, state that the signal is uh, is known to us the signal is constrained by its power okay and the signal power we can also call it as its mean square value okay let us say that this is designated or this can be represented with the symbol s okay so the disturbance or the noise is said to be additive gaussian is fine but uh, it is said to be you know uh, additive okay in the sense in the sense we can say that the received signal therefore the received signal can be represented as y of t which is the transmitted signal x of t and since the noise is additive the noise gets mathematically added to the transmitted signal okay since we have assumed that the channel is band limited okay obviously the signal x of t and n of t both will be band limited okay since the channel is band limited that we have assumed as case 1 okay let's say that this is one of the cases where we'll assume the uh, the bandwidth of the channel is limited to b hertz now then later we can uh, try to relax this uh, limitation on bandwidth and let's try to uh, take it into infinite bandwidth as unlimited bandwidth and then also we'll formulate what uh, would be the definition of channel capacity uh, as stated by Sharon okay since the channel is band limited now in the first case okay so I can say that this implies that both x of t and n of t are band limited okay to to the same uh, bandwidth b to to b hertz okay such that this noise uh, whatever spectral density that I have defined here right so this will also be band limited to you know b and minus b okay so this implies that with that i can say the noise power since we know the signal power we have represented by s so since noise is also band limited so this implies that the noise power okay noise power which can be represented as its mean square value so if i say that this can be represented as simply as n square of t okay n square of t the mean square value this would be given as n naught over 2 times 
what is the uh, this is power spectral density what is the density the area or uh, the length over which or the uh, bandwidth over which we have uh, we, we will be considering uh, the, uh, the the noise itself which is your twice of b so that means that the noise the noise power is simply n not times b so we call this as simply as capital n okay so this all will be helpful in later stages so uh, similarly this s is nothing but it is the mean square value so i can say that this is you know i can say uh, mean of x square of t uh, or the power signal power is represented as you know capital s so with this you know known quantities or with this you know with these given quantities now uh, we can say that uh, these signals whatever signals x of t n of t and y of t uh, which is sum of uh, x of t and n of t all these signals can uh, uh, can be uh, can be said that they they can be specified by uh, they can be completely specified by uh, the, if they are if they are sampled at a rate of twice of the bandwidth right because the uh, the frequency or the maximum frequency that of the channel uh, itself is capital b and hence i can say that therefore all these signals all these signals can be can completely be specified by specified by right twice of b samples per second okay all right okay so let us find uh, now the maximum uh, information that can be transmitted per sample okay that's what is our aim to find out the channel capacity uh, which is nothing but the maximum uh, uh, information that can be transmitted per sample or per symbol okay so with that to proceed further if i say that okay okay the method to find that okay so to find that uh, let us say let x n and y represent represent the samples the sample values of x of t n of t y of t respectively okay the then we can find out you know a few of the quantities since i of x y since we know that with symmetric property this can be written as h of y h of y given x let's try to find out each of these quantities h of y given x we know that h of y given x is given as by definition we know that this is averaged over all the symbols x and y the joint pdf times the uncertainty involved which is log 1 y probability density function uh, conditional density y given x dx dy okay so to find out h of y given i mean in the sense to find out uh, 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 the maximum information that is transmitted per symbol we need to evaluate the right hand side or we have to find out the right hand side of the equation for the given uh, uh, the specification Right. so h of y given x is function of uh, the joint pdf and the conditional you know pdf so we can rearrange you know some things here we can rearrange this as p of x i mean since p of x comma y can be written as p of x times p of y given x by product rule similar to that we have done this in earlier session so doing the same thing here so this can be rewritten as i mean rearranged as this way okay so this is our h of y 
a given x let us call this as equation 1 let's take this as equation 2 okay right since y is equal to x plus 1 since we have taken the samples now y of t the sample is y and the sample of x of t we will be representing as x and sample of n of t uh, we will be representing as simply n for a given x and y okay for a given x which is the input or the transmitted you know symbol for a given x and y okay uh, for a given x i can say okay for a given quantity x because the condition probability uh, states that probability of probability density of y given x so that uh, so for a given quantity or given sample of x y is equal to simply n plus a constant right y is simply okay x plus sorry y is simply the noise sample plus some constant the constant is here is x itself okay so uh, if i fix the value of x if i want to find out the density of y this is equivalent to the probability density of y so this implies that the distribution of y the distribution of y uh, uh, when x has given a value when when x is given okay of course so when x is given this is identical to that of to the distribution of of n correct except for a translation by a constant except except for a translation kind of a dc shift there for a translation by x okay this implies that if if i represent the distribution of noise as pn if this represents the probability distribution function of noise is represented as pn of of noise sample if i say okay then i can write p of y given x probability distribution of y for a given value of x which is nothing but this is probably distribution of the noise sample but it is shifted by a constant x which i can represent this as simply as y minus x okay because it's very identical to uh, i can say this is the uh, probability distribution of n itself but here here n is uh, uh, the probability density of y itself but it is you know subtracted with a constant of x right so that okay so this implies since i have uh, i have got this density function in equation 2 i can write that's that quantity which is minus infinity to infinity y given x times log 1 over y given x dy the second term can be written as minus infinity to infinity probability y given x now it would be pn of y minus x log 1 over pn y minus x dy okay letting let y minus x is some constant there or some you know other variable third we get okay we can write this left hand side 
as which is minus infinity to infinity y given x log 1 over p y given x dy now is simply minus infinity to infinity pn of z log 1 over pn over z since y minus x is z dy since x is a constant I can just simply replace dy with dz okay so therefore we'll use this result okay we will use this result as equation 3 if I'm not wrong yeah let's try to substitute equation 3 into equation 2 but noting that the first term in the product the first term in the product of equation 2 it is simply area under the curve of a PDF which is unity that you know right so that I can write here itself that knowing the fact that this is unity okay so with that the conditional entropy h of y given x okay substituting 3 into we get h of y given x would be simply would simply I can say that this is minus infinity to infinity pn of z log 1 over pn of z dz which is actually a form of entropy itself where entropy we had defined it as uh, p of x times log of 1 over p of x dz which is uh, average entropy taken over all the samples of uh, any any sample that that we consider and hence since is the form of a certain entropy but here the sample value is from the noise and hence this can be written as simply as entropy of the noise itself okay so with that okay so with that now since if i call this as equation 4 now let's try to substitute this put 4 in equation 1 so the equation 1 that we have is i of xy which is the information which was actually the difference of h of y minus h of y given x which now we have designated it as h of n okay so this this is amount of information which is bits per sample okay okay all right so this we have arrived at as equation number five right okay now that the this is a most generic form okay so far we have not plugged in any known information or any given information this is just uh, either, uh, the generic uh, the part that we have worked out and uh, uh, just replace the conditional probability with the uh, the, uh, the conditional entropy with the entropy of the noise itself now plugging in the given information now considering the given information given given information okay now because the given information which is that the noise is given to us okay that is okay for a given noise okay, since the noise is given to us or the channel is given to us right for a given noise or I can say for a given channel okay i of x y which is your mutual information is maximum okay the only variable here would be when h of y is maximum 
right so all we need to maximize uh, the entropy of the received symbol okay so that we know another information from the earlier session that we also know that we also know that for a given mean square value okay for a given mean square value h of y is maximum when 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 the sample y is what what kind of distribution it should follow when y is gaussian correct so when y is gaussian and we can write the maximum entropy we have de defined that right we have calculated or in fact we have arrived at an expression where h of h of y is maximum so this is a maximum entropy for a given mean square value there are two cases uh, if the mean square value is given or uh, in other words if variance is given for a mean, zero mean uh, uh, random uh, uh, variable or uh, if the maximum value is given you would get the entropy uh, in, in uh, we can find out uh, easily the maximum entropy here uh, for a given mean square value we can write h max of y as this is from the known you know uh, equation h of y is given as log of 2 pi e sigma square correct here in the uh, the case uh, here the sigma square is you know uh, the sample here is sigma y square but what is this mean square value this sigma y square is nothing but the mean square value in our case which is actually is nothing but the mean square value of x plus the mean square value of n which is the signal power plus the noise power that we have you know uh, written in a given uh, specification so this implies that so this implies that the maximum entropy the maximum conditional entropy of the received symbol is half logarithmic of 2 pi e times s plus n where sigma y square is simply the sum of signal power and the noise power okay so with that uh, uh, we can also state that uh, uh, since we, uh, since n is Gaussian, since I can say, since y is x plus n, carefully note this point here. Now, n is Gaussian, n is Gaussian, that is from the given channel nature. y is also Gaussian because we are maximizing the entropy. This is from, to be made, to make it more understandable this is from the given channel okay so this is due to the fact that we are maximizing entropy entropy h of y okay since the left hand side is gaussian and one of the quantities on the right hand side is Gaussian obviously uh, the the sample uh, value hex must also be Gaussian so then only uh, the y can can have a Gaussian distribution okay so this implies that y sorry this implies that this implies that x must be Gaussian okay okay so s x uh, x must be Gaussian and we know that and we also know that 
uh, we know that uh, sigma x square that is nothing but the mean square value of x which is given as capital S therefore <coughs> sorry therefore the probability distribution of Gaussian that we know 1 over root 2 pi sigma x square exponential x minus mu mu is 0 the non you know 0 mean Gaussian distribution x square over 2 sigma x square so therefore replacing sigma x square with the signal par which is capital X e power minus x square to s okay so that I can uh, uh, write this as and I can write the mutual information now okay which which is actually the maximum information h max of y minus h of n okay which is nothing but 1 over 2 logarithmic of which is 2 pi e times s plus n minus h of n okay but so therefore this is x y the mutual information however we also know a fact that if n is Gaussian I can write but for a white Gaussian noise for a white Gaussian noise the mean square value which is mean square value that we have written it as n remember this n is n naught times b okay so this implies that h of n can also be written as half log of 2 pi e sigma n square which is is nothing but half of log 2 pi e capital N substituting that back to our equation okay so back to our equation of maximum entropy so this implies I x y which is half log 2 pi e times s plus n minus half log 2 pi e times n using the property of logarithmic I can write this as okay so therefore this is channel capacity per symbol which is the maximum rate of information transmission which is half logarithmic of rearranging the terms I would get this as 2 pi e s plus n over 2 pi e n so which is nothing but the 2 pi term gets cancelled so s plus n over n okay so this implies the channel capacity per symbol is given as half log 1 over s over n okay so this is an important expression of the channel capacity per symbol okay so if you want to find out the channel capacity per second so this implies the channel capacity 
per second is nothing but c okay since what is the nyquist rate what is the number of samples per second so this i can say c is if this is a channel capacity per symbol so this is now per symbol okay the, ch uh, the channel capacity per symbol times number of symbols per second okay number of samples or symbols per second which is nothing but cs times the nyquist rate which is twice of b all right so this implies capital c if i try to multiply cs times 2b this would be simply b log okay remember this is logarithmic to the base 2 1 plus s over n this serves as an important expression which is we call it as channel shannon's you know, capacity expression okay all right so this uh, channel capacity c as i told this represents the maximum possible information per second okay so this is nothing but the c represents this is the maximum information transmitted per second all right so i can say the unit would be simply this is bit per second okay so this is a case with when the channel is band limited the channel is uh, uh, is uh, has a noise which is gaussian additive wide gaussian uh, and it is band limited okay for the case with uh, 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 we can say okay we can say that the capacity or the channel capacity if for unlimited bandwidth okay for unlimited bandwidth in the sense for infinite bandwidth okay that that means that the bandwidth is tending to infinity okay so uh, in the sense you know superficially the above equation that we have uh, just written it seems to indicate that channel capacity will also uh, will be tending to infinity in a sense we can have uh, the infinite amount of rate of transmission if the bandwidth of the channel is infinity okay it seems to be so but this is definitely not true okay so okay so that uh, uh, as bandwidth is the only you know uh, the quantity which uh, appearing as a multiplication uh, term here as i take b tends to infinity this doesn't imply okay this doesn't imply c is tending to infinity let's see and how is that possible okay so let me rewrite the channel capacity expression which is b times log to the base to 1 plus s over n i can rearrange the term or i can first write this as log base 2 1 plus s over n naught times b okay okay so now that as limit b tends to infinity of the channel capacity okay the limit b tending to infinity b times log base 2 1 plus s or n naught times b okay i'll try to rearrange this since there are the terms two terms involving 
uh, uh, the term of B okay so this can be rearranged as as a limit B tends to infinity you can write this as s over n naught since I have uh, multiplied with s over n naught I have to multiply inside the bracket n naught over s times b of log base 2 1 s over n naught times b okay uh, this seems that uh, if I call okay so left hand side is of course uh, uh, the uh, the channel capacity when b is tending to infinity if i say let this term n naught times b over s if i call this as say x small x is this is of the form the above equation i can say this term the term inside the square braces which I am interested in now okay so this term can be written as simply as as limit x tending to infinity this can be written as x log base 2 1 plus you can say since this is n naught b over s this term is 1 over x or I can say this as limit so some other variable t tending to 0 I'll replace x with 1 over t okay log base 2 1 plus this is 1 over x I've replaced that with t where I say that this t is 1 over x and hence I have replaced the limit x tending to infinity to t tending to 0 so this is nothing but of this form t tending to 0 log base 2 1 plus t over t okay using since the numerator as t tends to 0 the numerator will also be tending to 0 and even the denominator is tending to 0 therefore using the famous L hospitals rule I can write this as okay as limit t tending to 0 I can take differentiation of both numerator and denominator so this would be 1 over 1 plus t since it's uh, the logarithmic is base 2 this will be log base 2 times e over simply 1 right so the denominator the differentiation of the denominator is simply 1 okay so as t tends to 0 so this implies that okay or this is equal to I can say so as t tends to 0 this will tend to 1 and this will be simply log 2 log base 2 uh, and this is log e base 2 so therefore what we are doing here we are doing we were we were in the part of as limit b the bandwidth is tending to infinity of the channel capacity c and hence this would be simply as you take up the complete term which is highlighted here would be simply log e base 2 which is nothing but therefore 
is nothing but s over n naught times log 2 log base 2 e so or i can say since there is a value for log e base 2 which uh, is nothing but of the value of 1.44 or you can say here this is 1.44 this implies that the channel capacity for infinite bandwidth is 1.44 times s over n naught right so as bandwidth is turning to infinity the channel capacity is not infinite even with an unlimited bandwidth of the channel we cannot have infinite amount of rate of transmission from the transmitter so this is a finite amount which is governed by the signal power and the noise power in the channel okay so we can say that as uh, the uh, uh, for a white gaussian noise so therefore in a statement i can say that for a white gaussian noise okay the channel capacity the channel capacity c is bounded by a quantity 1.44 s over n naught okay as b tends to infinity we can as well plot a graph of the variation of the channel capacity by just you know rearranging the terms okay graphical view of this graphically okay just rearrange the terms here where c i can rewrite this as b log base 2 of 1 plus it was s over n so i can rearrange the term here 1 over b by s n naught i can try to plot okay so the plot of this would be try to plot this as channel capacity as y axis and the quantity b over s n naught as x axis <coughs> as i said okay so this is the channel capacity and this if this is being b over s n naught on the x axis right if this is zero this if say this is one say two and three okay so if i try to plot this okay so for b over s n naught uh, uh, if it's one uh, uh, if it is zero obviously this will be simply you know b times log 2 of 1 and hence for zero bandwidth the plot would be starting from you know zero okay so for b over s n naught if it's one then it's log 2 base 2 which is one which is b itself so i can say that uh, if i keep on trying to you know plot this as i increase uh, this you know b over s n naught for uh, increasing in b this <coughs> keeps on growing and attains a saturation or attains a bound okay where this is bounded by a quantity as we have just seen that 
this is bounded by one point the term the quantity one point four four s over a naught. Okay, so this is a graphical uh, you know pers uh, uh, view of a channel capacity versus a bandwidth for a channel with white Gaussian noise and for a fixed signal path. Okay. All right. So we have what we have done. Uh, we have using the concepts of information theory. We have shown that it is possible to transmit error-free information at a rate of b times log of 1 plus uh, s over n bits per second over a channel band limited to b hertz okay so what we have shown as a summary i can say that okay okay uh, using the concepts of information theory it is possible or it is possible to transmit error free information okay error free information at a rate what is the maximum rate at a rate of b log 1 plus s over n bits per second okay over a band limited channel okay with b hertz of bandwidth okay the signal power s and the channel noise uh, with the power of n uh, is if it's you know known to us we can find out what is the maximum rate of you know transmission that uh, is possible over uh, you know over a band limited channel all right so this is one of the important you know uh, summary that uh, can be drawn out of our discussion in this session also you should note that the channel capacity whatever it's indicated by shannon's equation so this is known as shannon's equation i can say that this is the expression that we have defined as shannon's channel capacity expression okay so uh, uh, the channel uh, uh, capacity indicated by this equation uh, which is stated by Shannon uh, is a maximum uh, error free communication rate achievable on any optimum system okay uh, without any restrictions okay the shannons i can say capacity equation represents maximum rate of transmission without any restrictions however what restrictions or what specifications that we have considered except for the fact that except the bandwidth is b right and the signal power is s and gaussian white channel noise of power n without these three quantities we have not constrained anything in our assumption if you have any other constraint or if you try to assume any other you know uh, uh, condition like say for example if i restrict the channel to be binary okay for a binary channel 
the channel restricted to transmit only if it is only for binary signals then we will not be able to attain uh, this Shannon's rate even if the channel is optimum okay so for I can say for any other restrictions we will not be able to achieve Shannon's rate. Okay, that should be kept in mind. Even for even for optimum channel. Okay, even if the noise is behaving like Gaussian. Okay, the channel capacity formula that uh, indicates that the transmission uh, transmission rate is a monotonically increasing function of the signal power s as we have drawn in the graph okay if we use a binary channel however we will find increasing the transmitted power beyond a certain point okay which uh, which is have which will have a very little advantage hence on a binary channel increasing s will not increase uh, the error free communication rate beyond some value it has a it is bounded by that shannon's rate okay this does not mean that uh, the channel capacity formula is failed for any other restrictions it simply means that when we have a large amount of power or uh, probably with a you know uh, uh, with a finite bandwidth for a large signal power uh, which, which if it is available with us the binary scheme uh, is not the optimum communication scheme okay so that is the meaning of uh, saying uh, uh, putting any other restrictions or any their constraints uh, in the Shannon's rate equation okay uh, and we should also see that Shannon's rate equation or maximum capacity equation okay tells us that upper theoretical limit of error free communication okay but it does not tell how it can be achieved this should be remembered it doesn't tell how this limit this can be achieved however although we can just uh, keep it as a theory although it may seems that it may seem that uh, it is just an equation uh, where it doesn't have any practical implication if uh, uh, if it is not revealing any methodology uh, to achieve uh, this you know the the upper bound that is been uh, determined by Shannon's rate equation however uh, over last you know uh, two to three decades it it's been shown that by modern uh, uh, coding techniques like turbo codes or uh, it could be LDPC like uh, low density parity check codes uh, are are proved to be uh, you know uh, to be uh, the, as close to the Shannon's rate the maximum you know rate that is you know uh, defined by the Shannon's capacity equation okay so this has got you know plenty of you know practical implication uh, which is one of the practical uh, application that you know we will be see uh, in light of uh, Shannon's equation with our you know PCM system that we have defined uh, in the second unit okay that would constitute uh, the concept of the next session thank you